Well, as some of you know, Michael did not fly home after the last episode. He instead looked for work and found it on a nice American catamaran for a while. Absence made our heart grow fonder, and before we knew it, he sailed back to Grenada at the end of that job. Hey, welcome back, Captain. Thank you, Skipper. Hey, I'm glad to see you. You're looking handsome. I'm not sure if the owner of that catamaran was talking about our relationship or about sailing in general, but let me know what you think down below. <laughs> it's not like a bicycle. It is it? Me as a seasoned cruiser, long time married, but now a widow, paired with Michael, a long time sailor, but a new cruiser, from a complete and different culture and a different part of the world, paired with the fact that we're not 30 years old anymore, and not flexible and malleable and living in a small space, it's not a surprise to either one of us, and probably not many of you, that the last year has been a struggle of the highest magnitude. I'm not sure we'll ever make this work, but no one can ever argue that we haven't tried. So upon arrival, the catamaran went to Clark's Court in Grenada, got hauled out of the water, and now Michael will be getting off of the boat and the owner will be flying home. Michael worked hard on that boat. He was the skipper, he was the cook, he was the, he was Mr. Everything on the boat. Three meals a day, kept the boat clean, skippered the boat, sailed the boat, all kinds of things. Whatever needed to be done, Michael did it. Took a lot of energy and he came back pretty tired. I think maybe he missed his calling. I think he has such a good arm, maybe he should have been a baseball player. Don't relax. He's pretty strong too, huh? I'm not sure he ever stopped moving on that boat. Putting the dinghy away. He's in hers. So after he got that boat on hard and all squared away, the owner went home and he and I decided to sail off and try our luck for a few more months. Notice the ropes on the dinghy. You can see that there's three ropes coming down from the halyard that we lowered the dinghy down from the deck onto and pull it back up. Um, when we pull the dinghy up alongside of the boat, we then attach it in three spots. But here it's only attached in two spots. So it'll come up sideways. Then once the dinghy is in the water and tied with two painters, not one, but with two painters, in case one is tied wrong, we don't lose the dinghy floating off the back. So now it's time to put the engine from the stern pulpit down onto the back of the little dinghy so that we're ready to go. So uh, first I, I'm untying lines and getting ready. Yeah, of course the outboard itself is also tied with two lines, not just the black and tackle. But also that red line that you see there um, is attached to another part of the outboard. Just in case something breaks, just in case somebody makes a bad catch, just in case we don't want the dinghy motor to sink to the bottom of the ocean and have to deal okay. with that. So. Wasn't my best work. You can see that it's work. still attached to the big boat, uh, still attached on the top. Um, I'm still holding it at the top there, just in case it decides to take a plop over the side. We want full control of that outboard while he locks it onto the back of the dinghy. Now we can unattach that, and we can unattach the red line, hopefully um, get everything on board without it smashing into the side of the boat. Um, sometimes it does smash onto the side of the boat, take some paint off, but that's part of having a boat. You take some things and you take some scratches, say there it goes. Anyway, so now the um, fuel hose from the can has to be attached onto the dinghy and we're ready to go. So where we go, we're going to go hike up a little hill here. We're in um, Tobago Keys. Many of you have been there. Um, here we are in the Tobago Keys, hiking up a little hill. Go see what's on the other side. Look at that anchorage, beautiful, huh? And that's looking over towards Union Island, which was where we cleared into uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So um, 
So we're in paradise right now here and stretching our legs, getting a little bit of exercise, never a bad thing on the boat. You know, a lot of people think you get a lot of exercise on boats and move around a lot. You really don't. A lot of it's quite sedentary. So when you get to a place that has a little trail to hike up, you hike up it for nothing else than to stretch your legs and stay in a little bit of shape as best you can. Um, it's a beautiful walk, uh, bromelades in the trees, lots of foliage, you know, not a rainforest or anything, but yeah, we want to go see what's on the other side, so let's go see. Ah, it's a beach on the other side, and other dinghies and other sailboats anchored just off the beach, and I guess this is where they have the uh, all the lobster dinners that you hear about them having in the Tobago Keys, 100 EC or 150 EC or something per person, out of our price range, but uh, we have our own little lobster bakes on, on the boat, but here a lot of people come for a nice cookout with lobster and all the fixings and beer and wine and all kinds of good stuff. For us, it was just a nice place to walk and talk, and before we knew it, we are back to the boat. There's no reefs, you're clear. We actually had to anchor the boat off of the beach, not bring it up on the beach like many dinghies do because our outboard motor isn't locking in the up position anymore, so we can't drag it up on the beach without the outboard motor dragging a trench through the beach. So we anchored it offshore with my super big dinghy anchor that I bought in Grenada. We took on a lot of water on the way back, a lot of waves over the front, so I'm clearing out all the water with our little um, bucket that we keep in there for bailing the water. Okay, can we have some cocktails now, please? Okay, good. Cheers. Our first night in the Tobago Keys. Tobago Keys are said to be the highlight of a Caribbean cruise, so we're here now. So we are enjoying every day to its complete fullness. Today we hiked up to the top of a mountain, and tomorrow we go snorkeling with the turtles. And now we're having a lobster dinner. I love it when it's Michael's turn to cook. <laughs> there they are. We call them bugs in Cape Town. Bugs? Yeah. So these guys are going to be boiled for about 10 minutes. You buy by the pound. Actually, we were sitting in a restaurant and, and a local diver walked in with a box full of lobster. And we got a really good deal. But the going rate is 15 EC a pound. How much is that in dollars? $5.50. $5.50 per pound, which means you're looking at just over $10. $11 for one of these guys. And that's a nice, healthy sized lobster. We will be eating pretty well tonight. Lemon garlic sauce with butter and some olive oil. <laughs> so good, Michael. I think you are the best cook on the whole planet. I'm the best cook on this boat. No, you're the best cook on the planet. No, I'm the best cook on this boat. <laughs> How's the lobster? Oh, phenomenal. Yeah? Phenomenal. I've never had lobster with corn. That's a, that's a main thing. I always have to have lobster with corn. Usually it's mm. corn on the cob, but it's nice that somebody took it off the cob for us. In South Africa, you always have to have lobster with wine. <laughs> well, we got that too. <laughs> <laughs> good South African wine. I think anywhere I go for the rest of my life, if I have a choice of different wines, it'll always be a South African wine. Always, always. <laughs> Unless you're drinking rum, then it must be Jamaican rum. Maybe so. This relationship's been a really rocky one, but there's so many good times that we just have to be thankful for the things that we do have. Break open a leg. That's hollow. That's meat. Boom. There. I'm just taking the little meaty bits off. Okay, you, it's all part of the thing. If the, if it doesn't come open like that, you just drop it into into there. So where, what is that yeah, in there? That's all the meaty. Here's the leg part that's just been ripped off the thorax. Oh god, that's so violent. And then. So what are you doing? 
What is it? Look at how I'm doing. I'm eating it. Wait, I thought you were making disc. What are you doing eating it? Mm. There's so much meat on the ends of these little guys. But isn't that supposed to go in the bisque, Michael? It is supposed to. But it's not. But in this case, every now and then, I have to taste. Mm, yummy. Just throwing that in. There's meat on all of those. Oh, you're spraying me. You see? Piece of lobster. Beautiful. In the bisque goes, not into my mouth. So here's the the meaty part of it. So It's not just the guts. guts. Here's guts, that's going into the bisque. Oh. But here, okay, those are like, they're like lungs. That's how he filters his oxygen. It's not lungs, but I get rid of that. I don't want that in the bisque. I mean, I would normally just eat that. Isn't that mm. supposed to go in the bisque, Michael? Yes. This right here, that right there is you see? bisque. We're going to eat all that. We are going to make like a soup kind of thing out of this. Mm. So all I'm doing really is just breaking it up into reasonable, you know, we don't want unwanted stuff, but I mean that you would just normally stick that in your mouth, that whole lot, look at that. You look mm. like you're in ecstasy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Michael, are you eating the bisque before you it cook it? It is so juicy. Sometimes just eat that. I could. So juicy. Mmm. Meat. What's this pile over here? We, that's the throwaway. But yeah. This, I will show you how much meat is on there. Let's get rid of that carapace. Oh, yuck, it's spraying me everywhere. Okay, that's all solid meat. Now, you would break that open with whatever you've got, but in this case, it's going in there. This was oh, the back yuck. end. Now, that's all meat. So, it's already perfectly cooked because we boiled it for 10 minutes, but we'll put it in the bisque. Okay, these are those lungs filter things. Oh, we don't yuck. like that in it. Um, but here, we call that the curry. It, I won't exactly describe what it is, but what it's it freaking like good. Bowels? It's not the bowels. Bowels comes out his ass end. That's the front end. That's the driving. Now you can see all of that. That's all meat. It looks disgusting. There you go. That's a massive big chunk of meat. Boom going into lobster bisque. A couple so of little pieces of meat. Waste. Wait, hang on. That's the waste. This guy, I just found him. He's going there. Eat. So that will all boil down. It will all be reduced to a stock. It's like that. Oh, yuck. It just sprayed all over me. Yeah. This is a real live... <laughs> all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I got... Oh, yeah, I'm going yeah. to have to take showers just to go to bed. Yeah. So that's the waste. That's, that's the going waste. out the back door to yeah. the sharkies. We're going to feed the fishes with that. Crabs. And, and the this sharkies. is the best part. It's going to be of one lobster. You got to, oh, that's two lobsters worth. Can you believe he's going to eat that? Where does this man come from? Oh, yeah, South Africa. That's where this man comes from, South Africa. I'm not eating that. This is that. what I'm they do it. in South Africa. They eat this. You boil this. that up. you got to be hungry with, to eat that. Um, onions, carrots, peppers, chili, some spice, Before straining salt, it or pepper. after straining it? Before, and then you cook it for a couple of hours. We're going to cook it now. We're going to cook that for a couple of hours. That's a lot of propane. Right. Yeah. That's a lot of propane. That's... Correct. A couple hours. That's correct. Maybe we should just build a fire like South Africans do. That's I must go and throw that away. Well, that was fun. I love teasing Michael about what a mess he makes. He really does make a great mess in the kitchen, but he also makes a great meal. So you just deal with it and go with the flow. So a few days later, we picked up anchor, sailed to Bekwi which is a nice 20, 25 mile sail to the north. Hey, you know, remember when I said I was a, a fair weather sailor? 
Well, guess what? I got my fair weather today. We had one day to make it from the Tobago Keys, and as, oh, as sad as it was to leave so quickly, we do want to be in Beckwe for the new year. And this, according to Predict Wind, was the one day that we'd have a little bit of east to the wind instead of all northeast. And uh, Beckwe is to the northeast, so instead of motoring 1.5 knots into 20 knots of wind like we would most days, we're having a beautiful windward sail in pretty calm seas, 10 or 12 knots of wind, and it's just a great day. No motor, sailing four, five, six knots, and what more could a girl ask for? Okay, so we've got uh, Union behind us. Panawan off to the side over here, and we've just left the Tobago Cays Marine Reserve. So I'm going to get a line out now in the hope that we may pick up a little fish. Or a big one. Or a big one, even better. I got my favorite little lure out. Needed some repairs after being mauled by an unknown fish a little while ago. But we'll try him again. See what we get. Oh, he lost an eye. Unfortunate. Well, who's going to want to eat something without an eye? Here's a one-eyed eye? bandit. Mm. It's always my nightmare that while I'm busy deploying it before I'm tired it off, yeah. the fish takes it. <laughs> okay, so what I can do is just attach the bungee right away. If the fish takes it now, it'll be goodbye. Thank you. I'll share it with you. Okay. On. Uh, Did it come up? No, but it's, it's probably small. It's probably off. Or yeah. he's swimming, he's hell bent and swimming towards us. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, no, there's something in there. There's something on there. He's swimming towards us, like. <laughs> yeah, he's not too small. That's a barracuda. Is it? I love barracuda. Side deck, side deck. Possibly can, side deck. It's right here, it's fine. That's horrible. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. It's us. Got him? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Right in the kisser. Okay. Okay, um, let me get some alcohol. No, no, I'm not going to do the alcohol thing. No? I'm going to put him in a bucket. He's going to snap off. He is going to snap off. Well, he didn't snap off. So as you can see, I have been banished from cleaning fish in the cockpit area, which makes the job a little more tricky than usual. For those of you fishing on your own boat for the first time, you will need to have sorted out your cleaning routine before even putting your line out. Figure out in advance how and where you plan to kill and bleed the fish. There is just no way around it, it is a messy business. And if you wish to keep your partner happy, avoid working near cockpit cushions. Yep, your cockpit becomes your home, and you don't want your home bloody or salty from being washed. Today the seas are moderate and there is no great risk sitting on the coach roof side deck while underway. But if there was any bigger seas, I would either not fish, or have to wait until it was safe to work with a razor sharp filleting knife. My first choice would be a large plastic fish bin to work in, which would enable me to work in the cockpit without the blood and guts contaminating the whole area. However, space is limited and the box never made the cut, so here I am, on the windward deck wrangling a yard of slippery barracuda that seems determined to return itself to the ocean, dead or alive. And I have on one occasion had a whole fillet and cutting board fly over the side. Fortunately, we were at anchor and I could retrieve the nylon board which floats, but not the fillet. Geez, not much wasted on that fish. Now it's time for the fish to feed the fishes. This is my first barracuda, and it's always a thrill to land a good eating fish. Always ask the locals before eating a barracuda from any one given area. You do have to be a bit careful of ciguatera poison with them. Many years ago I spent some time packing fish in a fish factory in Iceland and it was there I learned how to properly fillet a fish and art I'm pleased to say pays dividends every time I succeed in bringing one aboard. 
I prefer medium sized fish in the 5 to 10 kilogram range. We don't have freezer space for more and often the previous catch is still waiting to be eaten. So any bigger and I'd have to release it. This barracuda was perfect. Just enough for four large fillets. Nice ziplock, meal size. You can put all four in it would. Yeah, no, but then you have to defrost it. Okay. Four. There we go. <laughs> all right, I guess somebody better clean this. Yes, go up. After scrubbing down the deck, I grilled small strips in garlic butter with lemon and then added it to a Chinese style soya fried rice dish with onions, paprika and mushrooms. Yes, I know girls, I'm lucky. He gets the fish, cleans up from the fish and cooks the fish. Yes, I know, I know. Yes, the galley was a train wreck, but in my opinion, that's a small price to pay for what turned out to be a quite memorable feast. And yes, it was worth cleaning up the galley for. It was a great, great dinner. You know, it takes a long time to figure out who's going to do what. Who's going to cook, who's going to clean, who's going to catch, you know, all that kind of thing. But um, I think finally Mike and I are getting down a rhythm uh, where we know our roles and do our thing. And uh, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, everything's uh, switched up from what it used to be. But uh, this is a new chapter, a new part of my life, and it's all good. All day long we've had full head sail up, the big Jenny, 130 I think it is, and the full main sail, no reefs, and we've been sailing along at four, five, and six knots depending on the wind. Had east wind, which is kind of unheard of, so we had a really great sail up, and, um, and now the wind has dropped down and it's right on our nose to go the three miles into the anchorage, so we are motoring the rest of the way in because it is almost four o'clock. It's gonna get dark in a couple hours and there are some things to hit in the harbor. We need to get in, so we're gonna motor the last uh, hour or so and make sure we get a nice place to anchor. So one thing that's been great, you know, the whole way across the Atlantic from South Africa to here, I don't think we've really used our mainsail. Um, just an imitation to jive when you're going straight down wind like we were for 60, 100 miles. But today we needed our mainsail to go to windward. We were going right, you know, towards the wind. So we needed our mainsail up and it was so wonderful to not have somebody, you know, dealing with the mainsail, falling all over the deck, falling over the side of the boat, dragging in the water, lines catching on the solar panels and everything else. It was nice to just see the mainsail come down nice and easy strong track system it just drops just like that and then fall into the stack pack nothing falling all over the deck no commotion no chaos no hassle just nice and easy so I'm so glad that we did that stack pack in South Africa someone here on YouTube gave us the advice to overstay a relationship rather than understay a relationship so we are trying again and we're making sure we're not leaving anything wonderful behind and maybe just maybe we have something wonderful ahead there actually are some really great things ahead for us and some not so great things ahead for us. Make sure you subscribe and watch for the next episodes where we have a violent boarding. We have some great snorkeling right into a bat cave right out the other side and uh, lots of other adventures. So stay tuned and we'll bring you some more soon.